There's this one thing about joint accounts that people, especially couples, mistake for romantic, sweet, or couple goals, but they don't realize that it is a ticking time bomb. Haven't you heard how people equate having joint accounts as goals for so many? Or at times it's referred to as something, sometimes something like he trusts us so much that all their money comes to a joint account where they spend it from together. It sounds all rosy until you hear the story that I'm about to share with you in this video of a power couple that I met about three years ago. By no means am I trying to kill your vibe and expectations with your better half or partner, but I wish to enlighten you on something very, very important about joint accounts that I think everybody needs to know before it is too late to fix. But before I proceed, my mission through this great channel is to equip as many young people as possible through financial education and investment advice. Therefore, if this feels or seems like something that you want to associate with, please join me by pressing that subscribe button and join Maneuversations. And if you find a video in this channel that is worth sharing with your loved ones or your money circle, don't hesitate to do so. By liking my videos, Unambia YouTube that these videos are worth recommending to many, many more others. So thank you for subscribing and thank you for pressing that like button. Let's get back to our joint account story. This is a true story that caused me to meet a remarkable couple. One day, a man in his late 40s came to my office and his purpose was to consult about a retirement package. He was concerned that he had not yet made plans on how to deal with his finances upon retirement. I noticed how this couple was so close and seemed to know almost everything about each other. By the way, that includes money. They were doing fairly well financially, I should mention that. To cut a long story short, I helped them set up a befitting retirement plan, and not just that, but I also incorporated a protection cover that ensures that whatever happens to either of them, no one suffers financial loss. I must say that this was not part of their plan, but out of experience, I figured out that there's a risk gap, but that will be a story for another day. Now, barely two months after that office visit, the wife called me. I thought it was a kawaida call, but it's perhaps the saddest call I have ever received. He is gone. Those were her words. I have never been so heartbroken. A few months later, reality starts to kick in. The kids need to go back to school, bills need to be paid, and business deliveries need to be paid for as well. And here is where the rubber starts to meet the road. All invoices to their business were paid to the company account, which had both of them, the two, as joint signatories. Their expenses all this while were being financed from that joint account. They only had to dummy accounts that they used to receive a salary from their company as directors, which wasn't enough to sustain anything but for tax advantages and conveniences, if you understand. In short, what I'm saying is that everything about their money was in joint accounts. This meant that although they had substantial money in the company accounts, fixed deposits, and a home account, none of them was accessible to this lady, even though she was known by everyone in the banks, including the bank managers. But here is the miracle. Her life and business still managed to go on, and I will briefly tell you the secret behind that. When we talk about how joint accounts are designed to operate, it is important to know that unless there are signatures from both the account holders, you won't be able to do any transaction. This means that you either have to wait for the other person or if they are dead, you need to sue them. This is because of something called the law of succession. In Kenya, this is quite a lengthy process, by the way, full of some crazy challenges, especially moral ones driven by greed and greedy parties. 
I explained in length this process and the challenges of going through the stressful process in this video right here. And I'm going to leave a link on the description below. It is a must watch. It is a must watch. Don't be caught unawares. So what are the solutions? I'll give three quick ones. Have separate accounts with substantial funding, which is quite unlikely, mm, but it is a great option. Two, have joint accounts whereby anyone can transact, anyone can transact without the other necessarily. And by all means, I think this is where true trust and true love abide. In the event of sudden loss or death of your partner, you can still move on with life financially. Finally, the secret hack that saved this widow's life was to have a life or wealth protection plan. Remember the gap I noticed earlier when they came to my office? I thank God they followed my advice because you see she received about three million from the company and um, as she goes through the low streets, she still has food on the table, she can pay bills, her family lifestyle is preserved. It's been a couple of years to this date and this succession process is still underway and those bank accounts are still frozen. I hope you get the picture. So make sure to go check this video out and make wise financial decisions as couples or partners. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.